You ready? There is a connection between the paranormal, UFOs, and the myths of ancient history. The clues are scattered across the landscape from a forbidden past, maybe even in your own backyard. There is a connection between the true nature of our reality, consciousness, and the unexplained. I'm Carl the Crusher. Let's explore the unknown. One of the stories is this guy, somebody sleeping in here, woke up and there was just an apparition in the bed next to them. Whoa! Whoa, dude, I just got the weirdest feeling right, right here. The the Something just moved. So when I walked through, I didn't want to say nothing, but I got what chills the? on me. I felt like I had ah, dude, I had something just moved through here, man. Cobwebs came across. That's why I stopped right here. No. We the door is officially locked where people see a shadow figure appear and loom over them that reminds them of a Native American shaman. And I am staying in the room tonight where all of that seems to happen as well as doors opening and shutting and knocking on the walls and different things like that, even when there's nobody in the rooms next door. Now I'm supposed to come in here and sleep in this room where people have a shadow figure of a shaman that appears and looms over them in the bedroom and makes noise through this wall and slams doors open and shut all night. So. We'll see if anything even happens here. I don't know, but after what I just experienced down there uh, in the, I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> it's gonna be weird trying to go to sleep tonight after feeling all of that and experiencing all of that down there. That was probably top three weirdest things ever. Um, and not even in one of the old buildings. It's just like in, in, in one of the like motel rooms down there. It doesn't even make sense, but now we're gonna try to set up here. Wish me luck guys, make sure and subscribe, turn on notifications. We'll try and get through the night, see if we see anything. I've already had some really interesting experiences here where I felt like a wave of energy was rushing up behind me and gonna shove me in the back and then turn around and there's nothing there. Um, all sorts of weird things. I'm kind of like spooked out right now, so I'm trying to just like calm down and stay rational, not let it get to me. So I'm gonna make sure and check inside all the closets. Like there's a picture of a Native American chief there, but there's nothing in here. No other way in the room. I've already locked the door, so. We're alone, alone in the room, unless there's someone here that isn't supposed to be here from another dimension of the spirit world. I oh, like the dream catcher. That's cool. This whole place is full of symbols that are the same as petroglyphs, like Kachina dolls, Native American themed. Yeah, it's very cool. I like the decorations. Everything is really awesome and beautiful about this place. Yeah, see, even the pillows look like the depictions on the petroglyphs and the pictographs. Right. Supposedly, Bob Bigelow is one of the people who stayed in this exact room while he was up here with Hal Putoff, Jacques Vallée, uh, Ingo Swan, and Yuri Geller. And they uh, were up here doing experiments trying to contact extraterrestrials up on the mountain, as well as researching other stuff about the shaman apparition that exists here and appears in this room well here i sit so far i haven't had anything occur i just got off the phone with chris bartell kind of recounting with him the activities of the day and the evening and then i actually walked back over in the dark to grab this book forbidden science uh, by jacques valet because i wasn't sure if in my excitement if i had actually seen this properly because here's jacques valet right here it says on our field survey at Bigelow's Mount Wilson Ranch. That's exactly where I'm at right now. In fact, this is the room that I'm staying in right behind them. They're parked <laughs> right out front of this window in that photo. Uh, it says Dr. Hal Putoff was here, Dr. Tim Ryan from SARA. I think these were the guys that were supposed to put the equipment in at Skinwalker Ranch. 
and this is August 1996. And it talks about right here in August 1996, this is basically when the, they take the private airplane flight from Nevada, and instead of coming here first, they decide to go up to Vernal, and this is where um, Bigelow buys Skinwalker Ranch. But then in the midst of this whole story, this whole thing, this whole story takes place actually here at Mount Wilson, not up in Utah. And so here's Hal Putoff and Jacques Vallée having this whole conversation about the Stanford Research Institute, Yuri Geller, and Ingo Swan in a conversation with Hal Putoff, Jacques Vallée on Bob Bigelow's property up here. And then they're having this whole conversation about UFO propulsion systems and all about, uh, not that Ingo Swan was actually here. These guys are psychic spies <laughs> for the CIA, right? What are they all doing up here at Mount Wilson? See, look, there's even a story in here about aliens who were building a craft for the U.S. that were killed in an accident. It mentions right here, the ghost of a tall Native American is rumored to show up in one of the rooms. Uh, this room. This room. So this is the room that I'm in right now. <laughs> that room. Great. It also says that Bigelow and these guys came here. This is in August 1996. He's completing the purchase of a Nevada ranch near Mount Wilson. That's exactly where I'm at right now. Where UFOs have been seen along with an elusive ghost. He plans to have the head of SARA come over to discuss instrumentation. So here's the plan. I have this museum of tarot.com mind to mind. Uh, this is a meditation enhancement system. I'm going to put this on my head and turn it on and do meditation to try and make contact with the shaman. I'm literally just going to sit here on the bed with a flashlight, set up my night vision right over there on the table, try to get a decent view of the room and see what happens. All right, so I can't get a good camera angle in this room with this tiny little tripod for my night vision. And so I'm not able to turn the lights off and actually do what I want to. I have a tripod out in my truck. And so I decided, why don't I just go ahead and walk over at night? It's actually uh, going on three o'clock, past three o'clock in the morning. And so I might as well go walk around the saloon one more time. I'm gonna dark walk over to the saloon. So this is what it looks like out here at night. There is the saloon over there. And this is the window. This is where all the photo was taken, where they they were just parked, for, you know, right there in front of this building. So, okay, let's go check it out. Walk, walk through here, and then we'll come back and get uh, get my tripod. So now, right through these doors is uh, where people have seen a shadow figure walking around up and down these halls. All right, so if you're me, you're standing here right now. Um, which way do you go? Left or right? I think I'm gonna go left. I'll do a big circle. Or should I go right? And... Okay, let's go down along the hallway. We'll come back through here. There's just all sorts of interesting stuff everywhere. Okay, we're in the saloon. There's no lights on in here at all. Do 
Yo, okay. Big mirrors uh, are definitely unsettling. All the taxidermy stuff in here, the Kachina dolls and such. I mean, they're cool looking, but coming in here at night with all these old pianos and stuff, <clears throat> it definitely has a haunted house vibe, that's for sure. Okay, walking through the saloon, here's the pool table. Storage rooms back there. This is the cowboy bathroom where people see apparitions here all the time as well. And also up there, they hear noises and stuff coming through that false wall and see different things, but... Okay, here we go. Past the cowboy bathroom. I don't feel so alone that I'm filming and I have you guys here with me, but I mean, it is definitely a spooky feeling, especially after what we've already experienced here. Should go through the dining room again. Here we go. Now they see a ghost sitting at the table in here sometimes in this room up ahead. people have reported. I don't feel any of the same kind of energy or anything. Like I did down <clears throat> at the settler's cabin down there. But definitely creepy, that's for sure. This whole place, though. I don't even like walking with the flashlight in my face because it blinds my line of sight. I can't see anything. If you're wondering what this is all about with this headset that I'm wearing, uh, this thing actually sends electromagnetic waves, it's actually doing it right now, that's what this red light indicates, uh, through my brain and through my head, affecting my consciousness and my awareness. Uh, okay, with the lighting like this in the room, I'm already feeling like I'm seeing something moving around over here. So I'm going to close my eyes for a moment. I'm recording with the night vision. I've got my phone right here that I can record with. I do have one little light here just for ambient lighting, but now I'm going to meditate with this headset on and see if the shaman will arrive. This headset uh, was originally developed through the Stanford Research Institute by Dr. Michael Persinger in order to amplify the human brain waves or align it with the Earth's 
electromagnetic field and expand your consciousness. So the idea is to do a sort of version of remote viewing. Now I am visualizing the room and the place that I'm sitting in as though extending my own energy and location and also extending an intention of friendliness. I keep thinking I'm seeing something out of the corner of my field of view over here to my left in this corner, of course, where it's out of camera view. My phone battery's dead. I mean, it's it's our it's way on low power mode, and I haven't I've been recharging it. That's so weird. If there's anyone here in the room with me, can you please let me know? This is what my point of view looks like right here. Apparently people wake up and he's just like standing by the bed. So I don't know, kind of sounds like a sleep paralysis thing. Uh, but I don't want to just dismiss it as that because I have felt like I'm being watched and I feel like there's, I keep feeling like I'm seeing shapes over here, but I mean, I don't know. I just keep getting this weird sensation from over here in this corner, like I want to look over there and then I don't see anything. It could just be an illusion from the electromagnetic headset and the cycle making me feel like I want to turn my head that way or something. I keep hearing what it sounds like talking outside the window too, but I know that there's nobody out there either. Okay, so I'm going to take the headset off. I'm going to put these Dysonian goggles on. These I also got at the Museum of Tarot. These have the purple lens filter in it that uh, activates your pineal gland and makes you see into other levels of reality. That's what the theory is. And so I'm going to put these on. They are welding goggle frames. I know that's what you expect. Like, they just look like normal welding goggles, but it's all about the lenses, like... So now I'm just going to look around the room for a minute with these on and see. Now I have the goggles on, but I'm using my headlamp light instead of the room light. But I do have the goggles on and I'm trying to look around through this spectrum. Oh, I wonder if this is the way to do this. I know that it doesn't look like that for you. But as I pan around the room with these goggles on, using a flashlight in the dark, uh, I could see how this could make you see into spectrums maybe that you normally would not perceive.
just heard something knock in the bathroom. Something just went clunk in the bathroom. Mm. Through that door right there. So if that bathroom door opens, it's like 4.30 in the morning. I'm not sleeping right now. I did not see the shaman. Um, I decided to fall asleep and see if I had any kind of weird dreams. And basically, well, let me kind of wake up and get ready and I'll tell you what happened. So I practice lucid dreaming and remote viewing and other different forms of mindfulness and meditation. And so last night, the experience was as I'm falling asleep in the bed here, feeling like I'm falling out of my body or like I'm trying to float up out of my body all night. And usually I use that as like a launching point to do astral projection or to become aware that like that's happening and I start lucid dreaming. But last night it was like I would just come back to being awake in the bedroom and feel like someone was watching me. And so I would sort of wake up and look over here in this corner of the bedroom. At one point I even got up and came over here and looked around, but I didn't actually see anything. I didn't have even any dreams that I remember. I, I know that I was dreaming at one point, but uh, it doesn't feel like it was anything significant. Like I said, every time I started to dream or realize that I was having that kind of uh, falling through the bed or rolling out of my body kind of sensation that I felt like uh, I would just come back to my body and sort of open my eyes and look around the room and then not see anything. But I didn't hear any more knocking or tapping or any doors slamming or anything like that. Uh, so we'll see. A lot of people have stayed in this exact room and the one next door and had all kinds of weird experiences where uh, they've encountered this shadow figure or had crazy dreams. People have woke up in the night and gone up and knocked on the owner's door and been like, what's going on? Trying to get an explanation. And people even hear like talking outside and stuff. I had little nuances of that, uh, but it was mostly like on the edge of falling asleep and kind of normal stuff. I didn't have any kind of shaman encounter in here, but uh, I want to come back. I definitely want to come back here and do more research here and down in the settlers uh, cabin. And today we're going to be doing a lot more uh, outside, up and around the petroglyphs, flying the drone and a lot of other cool stuff. You were saying, dude, that you had the same thing while you were sleeping last night, feeling like you couldn't fall asleep or relax or like somebody was staring over the top of me watching me. Like you were being watched all night. Yeah, me too, man. Like, uh, wake up every, I don't know, 15 to 20, maybe 30 minutes of solid sleep, and then that was it. But, and then I only slept for maybe at the most three hours. Right. Yeah, me but too. I but think, you feel I great, right? Today. Yeah. Yeah, I feel amazing too. But same thing. I felt like all night I was just like, I felt like I was about to fall off the bed or like go out of body. And then I would wake up and feel like somebody was staring at me, but there was just nothing there.